F48F-12B577-AA, the Constant Control Relay Module, better known as the CCRM. This little box of mystery, one of the biggest myths in SN95s. Let's crack into it and see what it is. Welcome back. I'm Darren. This is the SN95 Owner's Guide. And if you're just joining us, this is the series where we take care of problems and specific tech for SN95 Mustangs, 94, 95, 5 liter and beyond. Mailbag items, not too much this week. Really pleased with the viewer support. The additional subscriptions you guys are really great. Happy to see it. And if you can, subscribe if you haven't done so. Share it around. Let anyone else who's got one of these cars know about this resource and what we're doing as a project to learn more about them together. That out of the way, let's talk about this box right here. As you can see, this is a constant control relay module, the CCRM. Now this thing here, anytime someone has a fan issue, a fuel issue, something is running bad, or the weather is bad, or their car doesn't hook the drag strip, the internet says this is your problem. Replace it, buy a new one. Well, I did just that. And you know what? This is an ax I have to grind. Let's start with a story about this piece. This piece right here, it's an F4. That means it was built in 1994. This box you'll see is an F6, meaning it was manufactured under a 1996 part number. Why do I have two? Why do I have this? Well, in 2005, I experienced some ignition breakup. I searched all over the forums. I was new with the vehicles and new with vehicles in general. And the internet assured me it was my CCRM. Oh, the CCRM is what's doing it. It's cutting fuel, it's doing all sorts of bad stuff. I changed it and I spent about $270 doing so. And you know what it changed? Precisely nothing, absolutely nothing at all. Spoiler alert, it was my distributor. I need a new one. But the internet was so inundated with blame and cause on CCRMs being a fault in 94, 95 cars, it really made me think. So I did some research. What is it, what does it do, and why is it ever seen as a problem? Let's start with the myth, the myth of the CCRM. Now the 1994 and 1995 Mustangs were kind of new compared to the older Foxes in that they had an electric fan. The Foxes, they had an old clutch fan. So by installing a new electric fan, you need to have something to handle the power delivery to it. And this came in the case of relays. Also to bundle things together, packaging from an assembly line aspect, they uh, put the fuel pump uh, module in there as well, and they just completed this one package that was easy to install. It just bolted into a wiring harness that was controlled by the PCM. Because the 9495s arrived on the scene with a stigma being always compared to their older Fox cousins, whenever something went wrong, everyone was quick to blame the new technology because it wasn't well understood. This module isn't just found in 94 and 95 Mustangs, it's also found in the Ford Taurus, it's also found in the 3.8 liter Mustangs. It's found all over Ford's product lineup, and you know what? They're actually pretty good. They don't really fail all that often, and when they do, they have a couple of distinct telltale signs, and very few of them have any real drivability issues. So is what we're going to do is we're gonna head out to the shop, hit the workbench, we're gonna grab the service manuals, we're gonna take a little look at how you can diagnose your own at home, and we're gonna crack into it and see what makes it tick. It's simpler than you think. Now let's take a look at the Ford 1994 service manual. This thing is the phone book or the Bible, however you wanna look at it. Yes, it's a printed copy. This was fished out of a dumpster when one of the local dealerships was digitizing. And now it's an absolute piece of gold to me. Anyway, first spot we're gonna look at is, this is in the engine cooling section. 0303-6 uh, and this gives us a breakdown of what the pinouts look like for our CCRM. So basically we're going to look through our pin number chart down here and we're going to identify some critical places because again this basically only has three spots of any relevance. So pin number one way over here this is the radiator electric motor low speed output okay this is one of the outputs. Then number two right beside it there's its brother there's the radiator electric motor low output again. These are both going to be a red with an orange um, wire on, on your harness. Carrying on to number three, battery plus cooling fan. Well, this one's pretty easy, it's right there. 
And then of course, number four, that's your, another uh, cooling fan control relay battery plus. Number five, this one right here. This is the only one that has anything to do with the uh, fuel pump. This is power to the fuel pump. So if you have uh, voltage output from here, that means that your fuel pump is being commanded power, it's being fed power, and if your fuel pump isn't getting power or it's intermittent, uh, look further down the line. And then uh, five, uh, six and seven are radiator electric motor high outputs. So six and seven. So six is here and seven is here. Now the rest of these pins all do other functions. We can take a little look at it here on the exploded diagram where you'll see uh, there's our pins one, two, uh, that's our low speed out to the electric fan motor. That would physically be the fan. And here's six and seven. This is our high speed circuit. So if you don't have low speed, well, that means this relay is probably bad. If you only uh, have uh, if you only have high speed, your low is probably bad. And if you have nothing at all, well, you should really start uh, start with your fuses. Always start with your fuses. And you can see back here, the electric cooling fan runs a 50 amp uh, fuse. Probably yeah, that's in the engine compartment. So that's where you're going to want to look. You'll notice over here we have our commands for our powertrain control manual. This is how the computer communicates and controls and toggles these uh, relays inside the CCRM to feed power where it needs it. It simply triggers low speed fan, it, it hits the relay for that and it cycles power out and the fan should spin if everything's working correctly. But you will notice that this is a pretty basic wiring diagram. Sure there's lots of pins and sure it's a mystery box, but let's take a look inside because it's really, really simple. So now we have our CCRM. So what I've done is I've opened this up by drilling out the two rivets at each corner and removing the lid. There's not a lot going on in here. Sure, we've got a circuit board and we've got some resistors and uh, capacitors, but the main thing to this is we have three common off-the-shelf Bosch 40 amp relays. These things are dead simple, dead reliable, high quality, and they practically last forever. Generally, their failure mode is when they're being toggled, they will stick and they will not shut off. But if you have one that isn't turning on, that's generally not an issue with, with a relay. These, these relays, their main failure mode is they weld together internally and then they run constantly. So these things can actually be diagnosed uh, simply by cutting out this one and this one, this rivet, flipping to the backside, accessing the pins, and you can actually find uh, for part number 0332-019-162-40 amp Bosch fuse, you can actually find a diagnostic for this anywhere on the internet, and you can even find replacement relays if you feel yours is suspect. But really, these things are dead simple. If you have any power to the fuel pump at all, this thing is good to go. Your CCRM is not giving you a hard time with your fuel. Now, if both your fan speeds work, well again, this thing is not at all to blame. These things either work or they don't. That's just the way it is with these. Uh, speaking with Tom, who uh, helped me research this video a little bit, he checked with, uh, with Ford. He's been about a 20-year mechanic with them, and he went through all of their TSBs, all of their recalls, all of their tech bulletins for mechanics, both uh, for customers and for in-house stuff. There is nothing about CCRMs. And he also noted that these are used on many common Fords in the early 90s. They're used on Tauruses. They're used on Mustangs. They are used on some minivans. Anything with an electronically controlled fan is basically got this exact item or a variation of the exact same parts inside. And he said he's only ever seen one go bad and is what it was is the high speed fan would not turn on. That was the only issue with it. And he said that was a very quick thing to diagnose. Because you had low speed fan, you had fuel pump, that was that. Now in my case where I had drivability issues, where I had misfiring and bogging and other things, everyone said, oh yeah, your CCRM is cutting out and it's killing power to your fuel pump. That is simply not the case. These things basically, you, you check the pinouts, you check for presence of voltage with the engine on or with the key on and then with the engine running, you can tell immediately whether these are working. So I hope that no one will make the same mistake I did by loading the part shotgun based off of what the internet said and ponying up for $250 worth of Bosch relays. Okay, that was super quick, super basic, and it did kind of gloss over a lot of the pinpoint diagnostic procedure, but it gave you a general overview of what's inside that little black box. It's just three relays and a controller relay, 
and a circuit board. That's all there is to it. Of course, if you open one up and you see that it's full of blackness and it smells burned, yeah, it's probably burned up for some reason. I've never seen one. I can't find anyone who had a broken one to demonstrate. They're just not a common failure mode for these cars or even in general. But it's what they are is they were cheap to manufacture, quick to install, and they're an excellent solution at the time. Nowadays, all these things are tied into other subsystems and are completely trouble free. I believe these early ones were trouble free as well. So hopefully you're able to take something away from this. And please, if you ever see anyone just arbitrarily suggesting CCRM, replace that CCRM, just take them back and say, you know what? There's some testing that needs to be done before you simply throw a $200 piece on there because chances are it's not going to solve the problems. As always, I'm really happy to have you along for the ride. I know this was a very quick tech video and I know it was very tech heavy, but if you have additional questions on this, I can elaborate. I have the books I'm willing to share and I can also get you direct pinouts or any other wiring diagrams that I have so that you can go through and decide on whether your own is an actual CCRM problem or something further. And as always, please like, share, and subscribe. And one final thing, always check the fuses first. Later.